Well, it's time for an update on my colony of bull ants, and this is the Mimesia brevinoda. It's been a while since we've had a look at the colony, so let's go inside, have a look, and see what has been happening. It's really exciting stuff to look at, and I hope you can join me for the whole video. Let's get into it. So here we have the outworld, and as you can see there is not much activity happening out here. It is winter, it is quite cool, so there's not much action happening in the, the outworld. But you will notice that the outworld is fairly nice and clean. Um, I'm pretty happy with the outworld that I do have, although I would like to make a slightly bigger one for them to explore, and a bit more interesting stuff in there. You can see there, right at the top, that fake plant, there is a cricket. Now this colony, and the species, and as you'd know most uh, bull ants, they do like to actually hunt their prey to take them back for the brood. Now in the outworld here I created a bit of a mound with the tube coming out that you can see there. I've got a little water reservoir um, in the foreground here. And then in the back I have a liquid feeder that I have a mixture of sugar and water in. Now, if you would like one of these feeders, they're specifically made for bull ants, and you can get them from Ant Shop Oz. And there's a link in the description. And if you use Novo Ants, you get a 5% discount on your order as well. So thank you so much uh, for that, Ant Shop Oz. And then I have another little tray out here, which I also put some uh, sugar water in, um, just to give them another uh, area, another place they can go for a feed. And as you can see here, one of the crickets has decided to come and have a drink as well. Um, yes, I don't know how long it, this cricket is going to last out here before they find them. But anyway, it's all part of the cycle. And if you keep bull ants, you'd know um, that yeah, live prey is something that they do like indeed. And I've got a couple of crickets in here just to keep them up. And very shortly you will see why I need to have so many crickets around in the outworld here for them to hunt down and collect. They have been busy in this colony, so they definitely need some protein sources. And as we look inside the nest now to have a look at this colony up and close, you can see why there is so much protein needed. Look at all of this amazing larvae. There are heaps of them. So there were a lot of eggs that were laid, and if you've been following the channel, you would have seen some of that in some of the shorts that I've been running. And they have hatched, and we have a lot of hungry brood here waiting. So it's essential to keep the protein up to this colony. And they are really enjoying this nest that I have here, this 3D printed nest that I have had for some time. And if you want to check out some of the videos on this colony, um, please go back and have a look. There's quite a few updates I've done on this colony. But today, we're interested in their progress, and here we can see a little bit of it. So, very nice uh, species. Um, if you're not aware, the Brevinoda is one of the largest species of ants in the world. Workers can get up to 40 millimeters long, and that is huge. Some of the bigger workers. But you'll also notice that there are different sizes inside the nest. So some of the smaller ones tend to the brood, while the larger ones go out and hunt. So let's have a little bit of a closer look up at these brood. And you can see here they're nice and plump and juicy and very hungry. So they've got the uh, little mouths there which we might be able to see uh, munching down on something shortly inside this nest. But there is plenty of them. Now we're right in um, June, July at the moment um, for recording of this footage. So um, the progress of these have been quite slow, but I do have a heat cable running through on this colony. Now just having a little closer look here at one of the workers, we can see the segmented body that they have. They're quite well known for these bull ants, and that's how you can identify them with the different segments. Some of the uh, bull ants are very similar uh, species to look at. And again here we look at, uh, we can see the jaws or the mandibles on this species are serrated as well. Some species are called toothless bull ants where they don't have any serrations on those mandibles. And again, that just helps with the identification. But look at how much brood we have in this colony. It really is exploding and it's really good to see um, because a few workers um, have died off 
over the last sort of uh, six months I'd say so we do need some fresh workers now we're going to have a little bit of a, a look through this nest and we're going to point out um, one of the newly hatched workers and what they look like it's interesting just to have a look here you can see the worker um, underneath the mandible is the mouth parts and that's what they're doing now they're actually cleaning the larvae they need to keep them very moist and also very clean so they don't get any bacteria or funguses or anything nasty growing on them which can harm the larvae and kill them so they're very uh, gentle and tend to them so you'll notice they'll use the mandibles to pick and move them up but it's the mouth parts they use to clean now here we have a worker on the side and you'll notice the different color of her she's this very light red color and that's because she is freshly hatched out of one of the cocoons that we had from the last batch of eggs so that's great to see we've got a new worker here and there's um, half a dozen or so new workers throughout this colony which is great now these workers do live for quite some time um, which is good um, up to probably one even two years some of these workers will live whereas the queen she can live for a long time 10 15 20 years in fact so you can imagine the size of a colony um, if everything goes well really the limiting factors of it would be uh, the food sources for the colony to keep them going so here we have just one of the workers uh, walking through the nest gets a get a good look at what she looks like and the different segments that you, um, they have uh, throughout their midsection their thorax um, which again helps with that identification now I was privileged I was looking here and in this colony if you've been following it I've been trying to find the Queen and I believe this is her if you look really closely at the top of the thorax you can see the leftover wing scars so really excited to be able to find her it was by accident and it was only when I was looking at this footage that I noticed so I've got a couple more cocoons here um, throughout the nest a couple more to hatch yet which is really good uh, fantastic to have and as you can see there's not a lot of activity happening with these cooler months inside the nest. now one thing I wanted to mention here is the rubbish pile that we have and this is something I'm going to have to keep an eye on so it doesn't go too moldy but what they do with the old cocoons is they stuff them into some of the chambers uh, to get rid of it um, quite interesting that they don't put them on the outside of the nest but I believe this is so they don't attract um, things like echidnas or, or anteaters if you're not sure what an echidna is um, they love to eat the ants so if the cocoons and that were thrown on the outside of the nest it may encourage them to come close so a species uh, gathers them together and stuffs them into empty chambers or rubbish chambers and this has been found in the wild as well exactly the same thing so here we have that closer look up at the brood here which is fantastic to see um, they're looking really nice really healthy brood which is great um, always nice to be able to see that um, inside your colonies here we can see uh, the serrated mandibles and boy they certainly can grip on it's really nice to be able to get an up close uh, look at the mandibles here we can see the huge eyes of the mimesia and right on the top of the head there it's a little hard to make out um, hopefully we can focus in a little bit more but they have the oscilli which are basically light sensitive sensors right on the top of their head which they use for navigation there we go we can just see them three little um, dots on top of the head and we can see really the uh, sort of that um, fingerprint look on the thorax now here we have a virgin late queen inside the colony that hatched a little while ago her wings are fairly broken um, and she has never left uh, the nest or the colony so it's interesting to see um, they've kept her alive and yeah be I'm not really sure what they'll end up doing with her or whether she will try and leave the nest but she's beautiful addition to have inside uh, the colony so that's a nice bonus and it gives you a bit of an idea of what a queen would look like well here's the uh, two actual nests that I have side by side um, it looks like they've vacated the Waitong one for the moment but they do interchange between them both of them quite often um, depending I guess on the temperature grade and the humidity and what's going on it's a good way for me to be able to balance uh, the nest 
between both of them which is great but you can see here um, there's quite a bit of room there's been a little bit of die off so with these new larvae it really um, will be nice for the colony to be able to expand out and we can have a little look through um, on the outworld here just to finish up but that's been the update on my colony of Brevinoda so I really appreciate you uh, sticking around and watching uh, the video right the way through with me and I hope you enjoyed it please give it a uh, thumbs up and a comment below I'd love to hear from you guys well none of this would be possible without my wonderful patreon so a huge thanks to medical carcass 9 huge anus Gornus, Gordon C and Ant Nation thanks for your support for as little as one dollar a month you can support the channel and you'll get early access to videos behind the scenes information and plenty of other perks on different levels as well so I really appreciate your support thank you very much well if you've watched this far and you haven't subscribed please hit that subscribe button there's a video there recommended for you by YouTube and one that I've picked that I think you might really enjoy thanks again for watching the video and always remember happy and keeping